In the mountains lived a girl named Ada who grew up with Abel, a neighbor boy. They had been together for a long time, so they fell in love. Accidents always happened, and misfortune befell Ada. Her father left the house when her mother became seriously ill, and she lived with her mother. Ada had to take care of the family. Not only did she go up the mountain to chop wood every day, but when she returned, she would cook for her mother, and then make medicine for her mother. It was like that for a long time. Originally, Ada and Abel had a very good relationship, but because Ada's mother was seriously ill, Abel's family thought Ada was very good, but if Abel married her, he would take care of her mother for her. For Abel's sake, they opposed Abel to Ada. Ada knew about her own family situation, and didn't have the energy to deal with it, so she grew estranged from Abel. One day, Ada got up early, and went up the mountain to collect herbs with a bamboo basket on her back. Time passed quickly, and it didn't take long for her backpack to be filled with herbs. When she was tired, she lay on the open space on the mountain, staring at the blue sky in a daze. Just then, there was a sudden screeching sound behind her. When she listened carefully, the voice stopped abruptly, which puzzled Ada. She wondered what the sound was just now, and wondered if she was hallucinating. After that, the voice sounded again, and Ada got up to check. Just as she was about to approach, she saw the head of an animal in the grass, which looked like a cat. After she pushed through the grass, she saw that the cat's leg was tightly clamped by the hunter's trap, and blood was dripping from the injured leg, which made the kind Ada feel very distressed. She bandaged the cat's injured leg with a handkerchief and took it home. After returning home, Ada ground the herb and applied it to the cat's wound after making sure it didn't hurt any bones. Then she went to the kitchen and got a piece of bacon to feed it. The cat looked at the bacon in Ada's hand, sniffed it, and ate it. After seeing what it looked like, Ada said softly that she was going to take care of her mother. Ada's mother asked who she was talking to. Ada said she picked up an injured cat on the mountain and brought it home. Ada was worried about her mother, so she sat beside her and held her hand to speak. Just then, a knock on the door interrupted their conversation. Ada walked from her mother's bedside to the door and asked who it was. Abel whispered back to her. Ada asked him with a puzzled face why he came. His mother would not allow them to communicate. Abel explained that his mother was actually kind and hoped that Ada would not care what she said. Ada told him not to come to her house all the time or his mother would blame him. Abel said he was not afraid of his mother, but he was afraid that his mother would cause trouble for Ada. Later, Abel reluctantly left. However, Abel's actions were discovered by his mother, who then quietly left the village with Abel. Abel didn't even get a chance to say goodbye to Ada. After Abel left, Ada went to see the cat, she also prepared herbs for it to clean up the wound. After changing the medicine, she wrapped the wound with cloth and then fed it. Ada's daily life had one more job, which was to change and feed the cat. A few months later, the cat's injuries had almost recovered. Its size was much larger than that of ordinary cats, and the patterns on its body had also changed a lot. At that time, it was covered in cloud-like black markings all over its body, and it did not seem like a cat she had ever seen, so she went to ask some experienced elders. The elders told Ada that it was not a cat but a clouded leopard. Ada ran home immediately. By then they were no longer able to survive, but they had to feed the clouded leopard, which became very hungry. Since Ada's family conditions were not good, the existence of this clouded leopard had already caused them a financial burden, so Ada decided to send this clouded leopard back to the mountains. One day, this clouded leopard still went up the mountain with Ada to collect herbs. 
At that time, Ada wanted to take this opportunity to send the clouded leopard back to the mountains, so she squatted beside the clouded leopard and stroked its head, then sighed deeply. The clouded leopard rubbed against Ada's shoulder a few times, then ran over to the side of the mountain and then ran back, seemingly reluctant to give up to Ada. It glanced at Ada again and ran away from Ada's sight. After Ada watched the clouded leopard leave, she felt lost. Yet her life had to go on. She believed that before long, they would be able to live happily ever after. A week later, Ada picked up the bamboo basket and opened the door, but was taken aback. In addition to a few pheasants, there were also a few hares outside the door. They were even alive and constantly fluttering around. This scene puzzled Ada, she didn't know why this was here and wondered if someone was teasing her. A few days later, Ada found several wild birds in front of the door, which made her even more confused. She didn't believe the same thing could happen twice, so she thought it might not be an accident. So Ada picked up the wild bird and looked at it carefully and found that the wound on it was not man-made but an animal bite. She thought of the clouded leopard that had been released. Ada wondered if those were sent from it. Seven years later, Ada's mother gradually improved. One day, Ada went up the mountain with tools and a bamboo basket to collect herbs. It didn't take long for her back to be almost full, but she didn't find the herbs she needed most, so she went deep into the mountains. After walking about three or four kilometers, she finally found the herbs she needed in a bush, so she quickly put the herbs in the backpack and planned to go home. However, because she was so excited, she didn't notice that the sky was getting dark and it was about to rain. Ada, who was in a hurry to go home, walked away for a long time and it started to rain heavily. With the strong wind, Ada couldn't open her eyes at all, and she couldn't even see the road, so she slipped and fell. At that time, Ada could only protect her head first, but she suddenly felt her body hang in the air and fell heavily, losing consciousness instantly. When she woke up, the rain had stopped and the sun was shining. Ada struggled to find blood on her arms and legs and pain in her ankles, so she lifted her pants. Ada knew that she had fallen off the cliff, and the herbs in the basket were scattered all over the place. At that time Ada couldn't stand up at all, and after several attempts, she failed. The severe pain was unbearable for her. She frowned, watching the sun go down slowly, and she could only wait. She knew that if she didn't come home, her mother would bring someone to find her. So Ada could only stay in place and wait for the dawn. Being too tired, Ada fell asleep unconsciously. It was just dawn that day, and Ada felt some discomfort in her cheeks. She opened her eyes to see a clouded leopard licking her cheek, then she saw several clouded leopards. After struggling to get up, Ada fell down again because of the injury. The clouded leopards tried to get close to her, and one of the clouded leopards held a vine next to her. Only then did Ada realize that this clouded leopard was the one she saved seven years ago. Ada grabbed the vine that the clouded leopard handed over and moved slowly. The clouded leopards would help her when she couldn't move and prevent her from falling again. So Ada slowly climbed to where she fell, and her bamboo basket and herbs were dragged up by another clouded leopard. After Ada came up, the clouded leopards stopped moving. Some were lying on the tree and some were lying on the ground, just resting quietly like that. At that time, Ada's mother came with the villagers. Seeing a few clouded leopards around Ada, they were shocked. The clouded leopards were very sensitive to humans, and when Ada's mother first came, they left quietly. After bringing Ada home safely, her mother called a doctor to examine her and asked about the clouded leopards. After hearing Ada say that the clouded leopard was the cat she kept at home, her mother finally stopped worrying. 
After recovering from the injury, Ada went up the mountain several times to see the clouded leopard, but never saw it again. Good people are rewarded. Ada didn't think that she accidentally rescued it and took it home to feed and it was only a long time later that she knew it was a clouded leopard, but she was rescued by it after she fell off a cliff. This is today's story. Click to subscribe for more interesting stories.